Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for another beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come together, to worship together, to fellowship, Lord, in being in your word, and to just receive your comfort in these times of trouble. Father, you are our peace. You are our strength. You are our source. And we thank you, Lord God, that as we come together, we can hear your voice during these times. As we open up your scriptures, we can hear your calming voice speaking to us. So Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to be our teacher here today. Lord, I offer myself simply as a vessel to communicate what you want your people to hear during this time. So Lord, as I speak, let it not be my words, but your words that come forth. Let not one false word proceed out of my lips here today. I pray that when we... Uh, Turn off our computer screens, Lord God. We do not turn off our faith. We do not turn off our peace. We do not turn off our joy, Lord God. We remain in that place of steadfast uh, joy and peace and strength as we continue to navigate these uh, difficult times. So, Father, we love you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, everyone, it's been quite the couple weeks and um, we've been navigating this uh, both physically and spiritually, uh, this coronavirus crisis. And it's important to acknowledge the fact that regardless of what your feelings are about it and its uh, overall impact on the world and whether people are overacting or not, we are in a crisis. And it's important during these times to, to check ourselves and make sure that we are operating in a place where God can use us. I mean, think about it. We've never seen anything like this. Never. Not in my lifetime, and I'm, you know, 41 years old, but in my lifetime, never seen this, and I've spoken to people who are, who are uh, much older, and they haven't seen anything like this in their lifetime, even though the world has faced things like this and greater. It's more of the reaction than the actual results of what's going on that's uh, unprecedented. So, I want to speak to you today on the topic of peace in the storm. Peace in the storm. Right now, the entire world is facing a storm called Corona. Well, coronavirus. And we need to be the light in this dark time. Think about it. This is an unprecedented time. So we have the greatest opportunity that we've had probably since any of us have been alive to be a witness to the world in a light in a dark place. And I just think as Christians we need to refocus ourselves and, and hone in on what's most important during this time so we don't blow this opportunity, to be quite honest. I don't want to blow an opportunity to be a great source of strength to the world right now. I don't want to waste our time on on arguing and all these different things and banter and back and forth when we have an opportunity to witness Jesus to people who are scared right now. This world is in, it has been engulfed in fear because of this virus. And we have an opportunity to come in in this moment and speak life to them, to bring hope to them. They are in terror right now. And it is a terrifying thing. Picture yourself in this situation and you don't know God. There's no eternal hope for you. But we have the opportunity to bring eternal hope to these people who are, who are in fear and terror and stocking up on toilet paper and all these things that in, in the moment don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. But to them, they're just grabbing on to anything that will make them feel safe and secure. And we have Christ that we can offer them instead. So I want to speak to you today on just how we can have peace in the midst of the storm and bring that peace to those who are around us. That is our job. That is our responsibility. You, brothers and sisters, have been born for such a time as this. You were created to be in an event like this. And that is proof positive because one, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have His very nature in us and that is what He does. He comes to be our rescuer in times of trouble. So that is part of who we are. That's part of the ministry that we carry. And then uh, along with that, we also have a wonderful opportunity to be alive in this time. We could have been born at any other time, but God saw fit that you be born now in this time so you can minister to the world and all this is, that is going on.
So let's, let's dive into the Word here today, and let's see how we can have peace in the midst of this storm. Now, while I'm uh, getting into the scriptures and we're going to be turning, I also want to remind you that this is an interactive time. So we have a live Q&A at the end of our time in the scriptures and teaching. So I just want to throw that up on the screen right now. Um, you can text 818-835-4030 and you can ask any questions at any time throughout the, uh, the message here. So again, the numbers there is up on the screen. It's 818 818- 835-4030 and I'll, I, I may not be able to get to all the questions. I'll, I'll do the very best that I can. I want to be respectful of, uh, of time even though y'all aren't doing anything. You're just sitting at the house. So, <laughs> so with that, will you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 8 with me. Matthew chapter 8 and we're going to begin at verse 23. 23 says now when he got into a boat speaking of Jesus his disciples followed him and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves so here are the disciples on the boat with Jesus and a storm comes up and the waves are overtaking the boat but something very interesting comes next. It says, but he, Jesus, was asleep. Jesus was asleep. So let's, let's get this in our mind here. And let's just see what's, what's going on. Just put yourself in their position for just a moment. They get on a boat with Jesus. I would assume that when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is on a boat with me, and we're going to a destination that everything would be okay. But in the midst of having Jesus physically right there with them, a great tempest arises and begins to thrash them about and the waves are overtaking the boat. First thing I want to point out here is just because we walk with Jesus does not mean the storms of life are not going to hit us. As a matter of fact, when we go a little bit further, it seems like every time they're on the boat, a storm comes up when they're with Jesus. But in this moment, the, the key thing is that while the storm is raging, Jesus is on the boat and he is asleep. I think my children can sleep pretty good. Like my, Once my children fall asleep, they're out. I can pick them up and move them to another bed and put them all over the place. And I wish I could sleep like that. You, you touch me when I'm, when I'm asleep and I wake up wide awake. But Jesus has so much peace, he is just asleep in the midst of the storm. And I, obviously, Jesus knows what's going on, and this is a lesson that he's teaching on, on, on purpose. This is intentional, that he is asleep. Why? He, he, it's not because he doesn't care about what's going on with the disciples. It's because he is demonstrating how he is peace in the midst of the storm here. So let's continue. In verse 25, it says, Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us we are perishing so there's there's two very different reactions to the storm that we see here we, we we see the disciples who are on deck and they're watching the storms and they're watching the waves and everything's coming over them and they are in a panic and they're crying out to Jesus Lord save us we are perishing we are dying we are, we are going to suffer loss as a result of this storm and Jesus is asleep. I wonder what the apostles were thinking when they come to Jesus and they're looking at him asleep on a boat that they're terrified of. Brothers and sisters, I want to I challenge you with this. If we have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living in us, we can operate in that type of peace in the midst of the storm. Jesus knew that there was a storm. He acknowledged it. And we'll see what he does in just a moment. But in the midst of that, he still had peace. His, his disciples are frantic and running around all over the place. And they come to him, and, a, and I, would, I would imagine that there's a bit of frustration in their voice. Because they're looking at Jesus in, uh, asleep on the boat. And they're like, hello Lord, save us, we're perishing. Almost to, oh, there's almost a tone of, don't you care? Don't you care? 
But listen to Jesus' response in verse 26. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Jesus' first reaction to them was, Why are you fearful? Christians, believers, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, in times of storms, why are we fearful? The Lord is with us. He's right with us. He is there to rescue us. He is there to be our peace. Jesus asked them a question, and I ask us now, if you are in that place, why are we feel fearful? What would we be fearful of when Jesus is with, with us? He says, oh, you of little faith. Not no faith. He said just little faith. He acknowledged that there was faith, and they're just growing in it. So he didn't say, you have no faith. He said, just little faith. He acknowledged that there, there's a growth process here. Verse 27. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? So this is their first encounter, encounter with Christ, literally being in the midst of a storm. Now turn with me over to Matthew chapter 14. We're going to see them in the same situation again. Matthew chapter 14, and we'll start at verse 22. Now, this is right after Jesus just fed 5,000 people. Jesus just miraculously fed 5,000 people and took up fragments afterwards and had leftovers. So in verse 22, it says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So Jesus is sending the multitudes away. He says, okay, disciples, get into the boat, go to the other side. I'm going to finish up here. He sent the multitudes away. He went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. So he's looking out, and now the boat is afar off in the middle of the sea, and Jesus is looking at it, but it's being tossed to and fro because there is a storm that has come up. The wind is contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Pretty awesome. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Here's two situations where the disciples are literally in the middle of a storm. And look at Jesus' reaction each time. It gives us a picture of how we as his believers, those who have received the Holy Spirit and taken on the very divine nature of Christ, how we are supposed to react in times of storm and trouble. Number one, Jesus says, don't be afraid. We need to make sure that we are not operating in, the, uh, in fear. You, we know it says that in 2 Timothy, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. And that word spirit in that, uh, in that context is talking about a mindset, uh, a way of thinking, uh, a, a, a culture in our thoughts. He says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. I haven't given you a mindset of fear, but one of power, one of love, and a sound. That means a stable, strong mind. We need to make sure that in these times, we do not allow fear to overtake us, and we operate in a place of calm and peace and a stable mind. Jesus has given us the ability to do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be talking about three things that we can do during these times to really walk in the peace that God has given us. But the first thing is, is that we need to remember that we do not need to be afraid during these times. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but He has given us, and listen, this is something that He gives us. He gives us power, He gives us love, and He gives us a sound mind. So these are things that God is giving us, and we need to receive them from the Lord. So, I want to talk real quick on three things that we can do during this time. We see that Jesus is telling us, don't be afraid, and we remember 
that he, he is the one in the midst of the storm. But one of the things that he says to them on both occasions is, Oh, you have little faith. You have little faith. So, uh, again, not no faith, just, just little faith. And, and that's, a, that's an encouragement to grow. During this time, when everybody's stocking up on hand sanitizer, and stocking up on toilet paper, and stocking up on all these things, and look, at this point, n no shame in that. I'm not disrespecting anybody. You know, we need to have those things in, in, in order to make it through these times because of the, the decisions that are being made right now. However, the thing that we need to be stocking up the most on is our faith, and that is number one. In times of trouble, in order to main pe maintain peace, we need to stock up on faith above all things. And not just faith in that we can do anything. Because there's, there's got to be a balance between faith and foolishness. Faith is one thing. Foolishness is something completely different. And I want to kind of distinguish the difference between those uh, here today. Number one, faith is not believing that God will do whatever we say. Faith is believing that God will perform His Word. It's believing that He will do what He says. So, God has given us His Word, and He will be faithful to perform it. Now, His Word includes those things that are commandments as well. And not just the things that He can do and will do for us, but the things that He is asking us to do in order to uh, uh, receive the things that He's, he's told us or do us as His children. So, in order to stock up on faith, here's a couple things that we can do. Number one, we need to remember the things that He has done for us. See, the, the disciples, in that second encounter with the wind and the waves, they were still in fear. In that one, they were specifically afraid of Jesus walking on the water, but there was fear that was there. He had to tell them, do not be afraid. Even Peter, when he stepped out of the boat, he was walking on water. He was walking towards Jesus. But what did he do? He took his eyes off Jesus and started looking at the circumstances around him. And in that, he began to sink in doubt. We need to make sure that we keep our eyes focused on Jesus and remember the things that he has done before. Surely Peter remembered when he calmed the sea before, but he quickly forgot. Brothers and sisters, we've got to remember what Jesus has done for us in the past. I'm going to be very blunt and very honest right now. When we talk about the coronavirus, and first and foremost, I do not diminish the seriousness of this and the impact that it is having, especially on our most vulnerable populations. It is something that we do need to pay attention to. But I also want to recall the things that the Lord has delivered humanity from in the past. I mean, if we remember the, the bubonic plague, 75 million people died during that time. But God preserved mankind. We, we saw 50 million people die in the early 1900s with the Spanish flu. And God continued to preserve people through it. Those are horrible cases, but God continued to be good in the midst of that. And to be quite honest, if you want to get freaked out about stuff, if you just go on you know, any of these medical websites, you can go ahead, put in, I have a headache, and look at all the, the list of things that come up that you could have. I mean, fear is available for us at any given time. But what we need to do is remember the good things that God has done. He has delivered us from so many things. He keeps us safe from so many things. We are so blessed to live in the nation that we're in. We're not going to see 75 million people uh, taken out like the plague took out back in the 1300s because we have advanced and God has allowed us wisdom and knowledge and, and medical technology to, to help us. So we need to stay focused on things that are, that are, that are true and lovely and, and, and have a good report. These are things that build our faith. Number two, we need to stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. We, 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 we stay in the media, and we look at the things that are going on, and it's always good to be informed. We should not be ignorant. However, we need to have more of the Word of God going into our soul than anything else, because that is truth. Facts are great, but truth endures. So we need to make sure that we are in the Word of God. We need to make sure that we are reading our Bibles during this time. As we, as we have these opportunities to be in our homes right now, what a wonderful opportunity to just stay in the Word, to be in prayer, spend time with our families, build our faith up in these moments, and, and, and not take the opportunity to just run to, to media. This is, this is not the time to catch up on all your Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus shows. This is not the time to sit there and play video games all day and get your, your high score up. 
This is a time to be devoted to the Lord. I believe the Lord is allowing this in part so we can get back to the basics. So we can get back to spending time with family. We can get back to spending time in the Word and prayer. We can get back to those basic things that help make this country great from the beginning, but we have slowly been pulled off track because of the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the things that we pursue during this time. So we need to build our faith. Be in the Word. When, when you're reading the Word, man, you get so much peace. L listen, I just want to read some of the Psalms and the promises of, of who God is to us during this time. Uh, Psalms 59 16 says, But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Amen. Isn't that true? And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Amen. Be my strong refuge, to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. I have become as a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Psalms 91.2 I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. When we read the Word of God, it encourages us, it reminds us of, uh, of who He is, and it takes us out of that place of fear and operating in faith. Now, I also want to speak to the foolishness aspect of, of being in faith. We can take faith and turn it into presumption. What I mean by that is this. We exchange the truth of the Word of God for the desires of our own heart. And that can manifest in a lot of ways, including doing things that are unwise during times like this. We want to demonstrate our faith, and part of demonstrating our faith sometimes is proving that we're not afraid. But when you're in faith, you don't have to prove anything, you just operate in it. So we don't need to prove that we're not afraid of the coronavirus or anything else by doing things that are contrary to wisdom. That's actually not faith. Because God tells us to operate in wisdom. And He gives us specific instructions. One of those instructions that He gives us is to make sure that we are obeying the governing authorities who He has placed over us in Romans chapter 13. So during this time, when the government makes a request of us, it is, according to the Word of God, it is on us as Christians to yield to that and be obedient. So it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. It doesn't matter what you think about uh, uh, the governor or the mayor or anything else like that. We need to acknowledge the fact that God has put them in place. Whether you voted for them or not, it doesn't matter. God has put them in place for a reason. And anything short of them asking us to uh, go directly against an express commandment of God, God is asking us to yield to that. And remember, when, when Paul is writing this in Romans chapter 13, you know what, let's just go there so you can... So we can read it together. Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. And we'll look at verse 4. Actually, we'll start at verse 1. Romans chapter th 13, verse 1. It says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. So listen, God put the government in place. Now, this was not a democratic republic that Paul was writing this under. This was under the Roman rule. This is under the same government that would end up killing him that he's writing these things. Now, there's not just a carte blanche, do whatever they say. There, there have been times throughout history that God has caused those to, write, to stand up against oppressive governments. But in this case, the government is not trying to oppress us. They're doing their best to protect us. And again, we want to make sure that we are obeying the Word of God and not operating in a place of foolishness. If they're asking us to stay inside so they can curb the uh, impact that the coronavirus will have on the most vulnerable, then we need to make sure that we are considerate of that and, and listening to those authorities and limit it. I'm not saying sit in the corner of your house in fear. 
but use uh, use that wisdom and be respectful of what the government is asking. So let's not take uh, faith into a place of foolishness. You know, there's reports of people saying, you know, we're we're ready to lick the floor to prove that we trust in God. I'm like, well, I don't think the Word of God ever asked us to lick the floor to prove that. Of us is being peaceful and calm in the midst of this time and being respectful to the to the government so that we can be blameless before them. It would be a horrible thing to start seeing news reports of how Christians are being disrespectful to the government during this time and how it's it's just another evidence that we're crazy. That's not the, the witness that we want to give to the world. So... During this time, let's not fade into foolishness. Let's not, let's not stand over here in fear. Let's stay in faith. Stay in the Word. Stock up on it. Be faithful to the Lord and what He's asking you to do. And be an example to those around us. So number one, stock up on, on faith. Number two, Isaiah chapter 26. The Lord writes in verse 3 here. It's a verse that you all have, have heard many times, but I want to read it in, in, in light of what's going on right now. It says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. We need to have a perspective here. And that perspective on this situation begins with keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. One of the things that Peter did in the midst of that storm is he took his eyes off of Jesus and put it on the storm. By focusing on Jesus, we're not denying that there's a storm. We're not denying that there's something that we need to pay attention to. But we're giving priority to the one who is Lord over the storm. We need to keep our eyes on him. We need to keep that, that perspective. And how do we keep perspective? How do we keep our eyes on Jesus? It kind of goes back up uh, to what we first said on stocking up on faith. When we keep our eyes on the Word and His promises and what He said more than anything else, that needs to be the, the priority of our heart, is what did Jesus say to us? Not just what the news has said to us, but what did Jesus say in response to, to those things? Keeping our eyes on Jesus is the difference between operating in peace and doing the impossible, and then operating in panic and beginning to sink. Jesus was Peter's focus when he first stepped out. But as he shifted his perspective onto the circumstances, he began to operate in panic. And that panic caused him to sink. And Jesus, in full of grace and mercy, pulled him back up. But we need to keep our, our perspective. When we're, when we're sharing information about what is going on, we also need to share the truth of the gospel. So, hey, yes, it is wise for us to stay in our house. But thanks be to God, who is above all things, and He is our healer during this time. That He keeps us from sickness and disease. He is our, he is our refuge and our strength. So, we need to make sure that while we're sharing information, we're sharing truth. Along, along with it and maintain that perspective. Also during this time, we need to make sure that we're, we're keeping the, the ultimate perspective and that we are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not ministers of uh, facts. We are not ministers of you know conspiracy theories and all that. Uh, we are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So more than anything, during these times, again, we have a wonderful opportunity to witness Christ to the world right now. Not just in word, but also in deed. So keep that perspective. This time, God has allowed this time to stir up the hearts of people to look toward... You know how many people are praying now? You know how many people are thinking about eternity right now? I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, is everybody who's, who's panicking about this is, a, is afraid of dying. That's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of, of, of dying. They're afraid of loved ones dying. They're afraid of not, not having enough food and dying. They're afraid of not having enough toilet paper and dying, I guess. I don't know. But what I do know is that they are worried about death. And let's be honest. In a hundred years, we're all gone anyway. We're, we're, we're trying to preserve something that's already got an expiration date on it. So right now, our perspective needs to be one of an eternal perspective. One day, I'm going to be gone. It doesn't matter how many years I get here on earth. I'm going to be gone. All things are passing away. But what matters most is the eternal perspective. I have an opportunity to offer eternal life to those who are perishing. 
We're worried about all these other things, but Jesus is saying, no, go tell them about me. Go share the love of Christ with these people. Their hearts are open. They're in fear. They're wondering what's going to go on. And we can tell them, hey, you know what? I don't know what's going to go on during this temporal time, but I can assure you of what will happen in the eternal. One way or another, you're going to get to the other side. And when you get there, you can get there knowing that you have peace with God and that you have eternal life waiting for you. This, this coronavirus will pass. And then it will be something else. But the one thing that will not pass is the truth of the Word of God. And that is what our perspective needs to be right now. We can, we can so easily be pulled into self during these times. That is, a, that is a basic carnal human nature. That we are self-preserving. So we get into, I'm going to go get 5 million rolls of toilet paper because we're thinking about self. I'm going to go gallivanting around all over the place and, and think about self. No. We need to be thinking about others. And most importantly, we need to be thinking about others' salvation. You have the keys to eternal life to give to people and to open up their hearts by preaching the gospel so the Holy Spirit can come in and do a work in them. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's keep our eyes on His ministry during this time. That is the most important thing that we can do. And finally, third, we need to walk in the Spirit, family. We need to walk in the Spirit. Galatians gives us the fruit of the Spirit. And we're also reminded that, in, that we're, we're not supposed to walk in the lust of the flesh. We're supposed to walk in the Spirit. So we walk in the Spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Usually when we think of lust of the flesh, we're thinking of perversion, sexual immorality, things like that. That's not the only thing that the flesh lusts after. The, the flesh lusts after drama, too. You know that your, your body actually lusts after drama? Some people will swear up and down that they don't like drama. But there is a part of our carnal nature that likes drama. That likes the emotion and the stimulus that comes from feeling certain things. So we will, we will lust after fear. we got people that watch horror movies all the time. Why would you want to watch a horror movie? Why? Because they like the adrenaline rush of fear. And we can be the same way. That's why people love to gossip. They love, they get an adrenaline rush when they're hearing news, when they're hearing information. And it, it's a weird thing, too, because we, we, we like bad news. If you watch the news at all, it's like 90% bad news, and then they throw in like, hey, so-and-so saved the puppy out of a drain. But everything else is, you know, the world is ending. Why? They do it on purpose because they know what the carnal human being likes. We lust after drama, we lust after fear, we lust after all these things because it gives us this carnal rush that we get. So we need to walk in the Spirit so we don't lust after those things either. We need to make sure that we are walking in those things right now, and especially right now. And, and some people are probably thinking in their mind right now, well, how do I know if I'm walking in faith or foolishness? How do I know if I'm walking in wisdom or I'm walking in worry? Because there could be a very fine line between those things. And, and my response would be this. If you are walking in the fruit of the Spirit and being intentional about manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, having spent time with God, having spent time in the Word, it is an outer working of, of having God flowing through you, then you are going to walk in them. And that means that when you respond to people, when you're talking to people, when you're sharing information, when you're loving on people during this time, you will see the fruit of the Spirit. There will be love. That's the most important thing. We need to be loving people right now. We need to share the love of Jesus with people. Wrap your, well, I was about to say, wrap your arms around them. Maybe not social distancing. You know, give them, a, give them an air hug, something. But a smile, anything. Especially when you're out in the grocery stores, only when you need to. And doing things, there's so much tension. You can give somebody a smile. Make, make light of the situation. You know, pray for somebody. Show the love of God. So is there, is there love in the things that you're communicating? Is there joy? Fruit of the Spirit is joy. We should have joy during these times. I'm enjoying being at home right now. I'm getting more time with my, with my children. I'm getting things stuff done around the house. I mean, I've got a to-do list of things that I haven't been able to do, and now I'm forced to be able to be at home and, and get these things done. So I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the beautiful days. I've been enjoying the rain. It, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to stop and, and literally smell the roses out there. So, joy, peace. When we are communicating, is there peace in what we're communicating? Or is there panic? Is what we're communicating causing peace or is it causing panic? There's a way of communicating things that, that can lean 
to one side or the other. So let's, let's walk in, in, in the fruit of the Spirit of peace. Patience. How are you when you're in the stores right now, waiting in line? How are you when you are going up to get that toilet paper and the last one gets given out right before you? How are you when people are waiting in line and, you know, wanting to cut and do all these things? Is there a, is there a patience about you where you can be patient with people who are in a panic because they don't know what you know? Kindness. We just need to be kind to people. Can we still be kind in our communications? Can we still be kind to the people that are around us? Thinking of them, preferring them above ourselves? Gentleness. Are, are we being gentle with people? Are we, are we understanding where they're coming from and having a, a sense of sympathy and empathy for, for where they're at? Goodness. Self-control. Faithfulness. These are the things that we need the purpose to walk in. And we just ask ourselves these questions, you know, is, the, is what I'm about to say or what I'm about to do, is it loving? Is there joy in it? Is it peace? Is it going to bring peace? It, it, does it demonstrate patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness? And, and, am I exhibiting a level of self-control? We need to make sure that we're walking in, in the fruit of the Spirit. Now remember, that's not something that you force yourself to do. That is, the, that is a, a byproduct of being in the Spirit. When you are in the Spirit through prayer, you are in the Spirit through uh, communication with the Lord, you're in the Spirit through meditating on His Word, then this is an outer working of that. So uh, I want to I challenge us as believers to make sure that we are staying in that place uh, uh, of peace. You know, when crisis hits, when the storm comes, it puts an amount of pressure on us, and that pressure causes whatever's inside of us to come out. Storms bring pressure. So we get to see what's inside of us during these times. And, you know, when we are in crisis, we often augment our natural tendencies. So if your natural tendency is to be uh, uh, in a place of worry or anxiety, it usually goes up during that time because that's what's in us, so it gets pressed and we, and we may worry in, uh, a little bit more than we normally do and be more anxious. If we are uh, overly self-confident, that when we get pressed, that over self-confidence will, will come out and uh, come across as, as pride and, and, and almost rebellious. Uh, if you're a peaceful person, you usually get super peaceful. Like the, the, the more the storm, the more peaceful you get. So we have a, a default and the pressure of storms forces that out. So we need to make sure that we're putting in as much of the Word and as much of Christ as possible so when we get pressed, Christ comes out and not our natural, carnal, default nature. You know, um, and one of the things that we have to understand is that people are different. And we need to have patience with people during this time. With people, everybody has those, those defaults. And just like there's love language, you guys know the, the five love languages. I can't remember what they are right now or rattle them off. But uh, just like there's love languages, I believe there's also crisis languages. That when we respond, the, the way love languages work is the way, uh, they, they kind of signify how we like to be loved. So there's, there's acts of service, there's you know, words of encouragement, physical touch, all those things. And usually, when somebody has that love language, that's how they express their, their love too. So the way you want to be loved is usually the way that you express love. And then that's where the miscommunication is. So if you have somebody who loves uh, to receive, we need to be able to communicate through that. And ultimately, what we want our language to be is the language of love and peace. That's, that's the ultimate language that we want to speak. But we are in different levels of faith and growing. And we need to understand that and, and have mercy and, and grace for each other during these times. And especially for each other because that's going to be a witness to the world. As we, as we are communicating now more on social media and, and through text because of everything that's going on and us not being able to be in, uh, in um, uh, close proximity to each other and, so, and whatnot, we need to watch those communications all the more because the world is watching us. The world is watching how we are going to react during this time. So I want to encourage you guys, listen, stock up on faith during this time. Make sure you're building up your most holy faith by praying, praying in the Spirit, reading the Word, being in touch with, with God, fellowshipping in whatever way you can with uh, brothers who are, who are like-minded. 
have a different perspective during this time. You know, one of the things I loved about my father growing up is any time there was a trouble, and I mean there was, there was always trouble, whether it was a flat tie, a tire, the, the loss of my mom, or the loss of homes, and all these different things, we had some very, uh, you know, devastating things happen to us during our time. But he always had a perspective that this is just an adventure. We're having an adventure. This is a great adventure and a great opportunity for us to bring Christ to the world. So let's shift our perspective and keep our eyes on Jesus. And then, number three, let's walk in the Spirit and in the fruit of the Spirit in all that we do. Let that be the gauge to, to our interactions with others and whether we are, we are truly representing Christ during this time. And have love and grace and mercy for each other, but also for the world. So... Amen and amen. I leave that with you guys. And uh, I want to encourage you that if you, if you haven't received Jesus in your heart, a lot of what I'm saying may be, seem a little foreign to you, but it rings true in your heart. And I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus right now. I don't know who's watching or, or uh, who's visiting and catching this at, at a glimpse of their eye from someone in the home, but I just want you to know that Jesus loves you very much. He loves you very much. And I know that there's a storm right now in this world. But it's, it's not because God hates you or it's not because He's not in control. As a matter of fact, He's very much in control of everything that's going on. And He wants to show Himself to you in the midst of this storm. He is coming to you walking on the water in the midst of this uh, trial. And He's calling out to you. And you can walk to Him right now, right in the middle of the storm. And if you want that, you want to have peace in this time. But most importantly, you want to know that when this life is over, because it will be for all of us at some point, that you will go to heaven. There are only two places that we can go. There is eternity with God and eternity separated from God. Eternity with God, it is called heaven. It is a real place. It is where there is love and joy and peace and, and no more sorrow, no more sickness. Nothing like that is there because it's perfect, because He's there. And we can be with Him. But the other place is separate from all that. It's separate from love. It's separate from joy. It's separate from peace. It's separate from light. And that is called hell. It is a place of torment. It is a place that God doesn't want anyone to go to. But it's our choice. He gives us the opportunity to say yes to Him and to spend eternity with Him. And I want you to know that you can say yes to Him right now. All you have to do, number one, the Bible says, for us to repent. That means that we acknowledge that we have sinned and we've made mistakes. And there are some things that we need to apologize for. That's what it means. It means that we're shifting our mind. We're changing our mind and saying, I'm going, I was going in this direction. But now I'm going to go in this direction. And that is towards Christ. And when we repent and we confess our sins and we turn our lives over to Him, the Bible says that we will be saved. We will be saved from judgment. We will be saved from... The, the things of this world, it doesn't mean that we're not going to go through stuff. You're still going to, like I said, Peter and the disciples, they were on that boat with Jesus and there was still a storm. We are still going to go through storms. But man, it is so much better to go through the storms when you have Jesus with you who can calm the storms. That's what He gives us. So I want to invite you, if you need to make that decision for Him, to just say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I've made a lot of mistakes. And I know you know them all. And I'm asking for you to forgive me right now. Jesus, I repent. And I turn towards you. I turn away from my old life. And I turn towards you. I want to live this life for you. And I want to spend eternity with you. So I'm inviting you into my life. To be my Lord. And to be my Savior. I don't know everything. But I know that I need you. And I trust that you will show me and teach me along the way. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, I'm so glad that you prayed that with me uh, um, over the internet, over our live stream. But I want to encourage you to tell somebody. Go tell somebody, hey, I accepted Jesus. I said yes to the Lord today. And that would just be a huge blessing. You can also uh, click on or go to our website, www legacyfamily.church and click on the connect button there and just send us your name and your information just say hey I received Jesus today that would be a blessing to us and then we, we want to reach out to you and kind of help you with those next steps it's like okay I said yes to Jesus now what 
We want to make sure that you're not just out there floating in the ocean by yourself, but there is purpose and there is, there is a, a plan for you. And we want to help you discover that in the Lord.